Today, we're going to be talking about a championship season, one that lasted nearly six months, one that had the eventual winners in the spotlight since the very beginning. This team took the lead and never let go, only increasing it as time went on. Their road to championship glory was never in doubt. The Crazy Cat's Eyes were selected as one of 20 teams to compete in the new season of Marbula 1. They 100% deserved the spot. The team was very excited to be invited. As their manager said, quote, We're very happy this team is getting recognition from JMR, and we're super excited to compete in a major event right before the Marble League takes place on our home turf. Just a few hours after being selected, the Crazy Cat's Eyes released the roster they would be sending to Marbula 1. Red Eye and Yellow Eye were the two selected, Red Eye was the obvious choice, the captain of the team, and he was that marble that landed on the marathon podium. Yellow Eye was chosen by Wide Eye because, quote, they were my second choice for the marathon. I'm confident he'll do just as well. Now, originally, this choice was very unpopular, as Blue Eye had just come off a breakout year in the 2020 Marble League and scored the most points for the Crazy Cat Sides in that competition. When it was announced that Yellow Eye would be the first to compete, Fans were curious to see if the coach's sayings would end up being true. And they weren't just true. Early on, they were better. Minty Mania was a brand new circuit. It featured the first ever banked turn, which gave many marbles speed heading into the conveyor belt. This would be big during the race and qualifying. The conveyor belt basically decided the race. Yellow Eye would be qualifying against Speedy, a marble that, well, had quite the year. Yellow Eye was far from phased, though. Speedy would end up running a great time, and Yellow Eye edged him by over a tenth. Those two would stay on top after the 18 other racers qualified, and we would get our first taste of Q2. Yellow Eye only lost one spot to Speedy, and they would be second as we enter Q3. This is important because Speedy took the lead right off Yellow Eye even though Yellow Eye had pole. Now Speedy didn't make the same mistake, but he did make a different one. On the conveyor belt, he fell to last and that let Yellow Eye and Smoggy get by. They would be our top two for the race, with Yellow Eye starting in second. Now for the race itself. Yellow Eye got out early and only got passed once. This pass right here would actually be completely nullified because of a red flag that occurred before. This meant Yellow Eye would start on pole position for the restart. And unlike their first time there, Yellow Eye held on after the start and never looked back. There was a little scare when Mobo got fastest lap and closed the gap to just a few lengths, but Yellow Eye responded beautifully and held on to win the first race of the season. I don't know if there's gonna be enough time though. A clean exit through the ramp, Yellow Eye gets the win, Momo picks up second, and Mallard rounds out the podium in third. The Crazy Cat's Eyes are victorious, Yellow Eye takes the top spot. Momo During the post-race conference, Wide Eye simply said, I told you so. We would get our first look at Red Eye for this race and he did not disappoint in his debut. Let's first look at qualifying. Red Eye managed to grab seventh place in Q1. They were incredible in Q2, especially this final stretch here, where Red Eye entered in third and came out in first. It was a very clutch move to let the Crazy Cat Eyes advance to Q3 for the second consecutive race. Red Eye had a pretty disastrous Q3, however. It all fell apart at the start of lap two, where Red Eye took this hard bump to solidify their position in last. Now the race itself did not look so good at first. 
Red Eye was even 11th at one point. But as you see here, on lap 7, the field was extremely close. That's 5 marbles right there separated by a few lengths. And that greatly benefited Red Eye on lap 9, where they were able to climb 3 spots. But another bad exit off the belt caused them to lose all of that progress. Like I said, however, the field was extremely close, and Red Eye finally took advantage of an opening on lap 15, where they were able to climb to second, and that's where they finished. Red Eye talked about his strategy after the race, saying, quote, I just stayed patient. So after this race, the Crazy Cat's Eyes were actually in second, something that's very forgotten about their year. It looked like a two-horse race was about to develop, and that was very evident at the Honey Dome. After Yellow Eye qualified in ninth, they had a very similar race to Red Eye, just a very quiet performance as they stayed mid-pack during the start. Eventually, they made their way up, and the only team in front of them in the standings was also in front of them on the track right here. Yellow Eye knew what he had to do, and they waited until lap 13 to do it. This pass right here gave the Crazy Cat's Eyes the standings lead. A lead they would never let go of and one they stretched in the next race. The next race would defer from the Crazy Cat's Eye strategy these last two Grand Prix. There would be no patience. After starting the race in sixth, Red Eye took the lead right off the ramp. Now they would end up losing it and started to fall back slightly before roaring right back into the top three. After just a few laps, Red Eye once again took the lead off that ramp, and after losing it entering the belt, they got it right back and held it. Into the lead, and then loses it with an over-under move that was a masterclass by Bolt. Two tenths. Honey, Pulsar, and Wispy, and Red Eye gets the jump off the belt. Lap 16 would be the next time Red Eye felt the pressure. Bolt, though, spent all of their energy catching up to Red Eye, while Red Eye was conserving it, and it showed the most when Red Eye achieved fastest lap to extend their lead to three seconds. This was enough for the victory. It was an early showing of just how good Red Eye was at conserving their energy. And this victory allowed the Crazy Cat's Eyes to open up a 30-point lead over second place. The next two races, however, brought some doubt to their year. Many thought we were about to see the same old Crazy Cat's Eyes once again. The team that always starts great, but falls as the season progresses. The next two races only fed that rumor. After their most recent victory, an article came out called The Same Old Crazy Cat's Eyes. It was an article all about how the crazy cat's eyes can always start, but never finish. It highlighted multiple occasions where the team could never keep form. And it ended in a quote that in hindsight was pretty dumb, but at the time, it actually held merit. The quote said, it'll happen again. These next two races for the crazy cat size were races where they needed to prove that this competition was different. At the Tamute Turnpike, Yellow Eye actually grabbed the lead very early on. And when the crazy cat size do that, they normally hold it. But this race was different. Yellow Eye lost it and just kept falling. Eventually they fell all the way to seventh, where they finished. The fans just kept waiting for the patented CCE push that we saw in the first four races. It never came. Now their lead dropped just slightly to 28, but that was enough to get everyone going about the same old crazy cat's eyes. The first half was about to come to an end and Red Eye, who had yet to finish outside the top two, would get the go. Their qualifying was pretty chaotic. They managed to just barely edge out Wispy to get into Q3, and Q3 featured this turn right here, which gave Red Eye the lead, but also costed him pole. Billy just barely got ahead, but Red Eye would be starting in second nonetheless. It's time to completely erase that narrative, or so Red Eye thought this race would end up being a big letdown. The entire time, viewers were once again waiting for that big push, and it never happened. There was a time Red Eye got to fourth, 
but they didn't do too much after and ended up falling to eighth. After never scoring lower than 17 points in each of their first four races, the Crazy Cat Size were only able to muster up 14 in the final two races of the first half. Their lead once again shrunk, but they had a lot of time to make adjustments heading into the second half. And those adjustments would prove to be crucial. We're about to see pure domination. Wide Eye would send in Red Eye for Race Forest. They had a very good qualification as they would start the race in third. By the very first sector, we would already have the beginnings of what would be a two horse battle. Speedy, a Marvel considered the greatest athlete in JMR history, was right up there with Red Eye. Both would be in the top two for nearly the entire race. They were the only ones to have the lead for the whole race as they took over this top spot on five different occasions from each other. But Red Eye would be the one to come out on top, and they captured another fastest lap. Their lead greatly increased to 48, which is the largest lead ever over second place. Well, so far. And how did they follow up this incredible race? By doing it again. Yellow Eye, who had not fought for the lead since their debut, made a huge comeback. Yellow Eye qualified in second, giving the Crazy Cat's Eyes their third consecutive top three start. The last time Yellow Eye started in second, they won. And that would happen again. Many people forget about the start though. Yellow Eye was actually in eighth at one point, but after a genius move off the belt, they were right back into the top three. After capturing fastest lap in two consecutive laps, Yellow Eye took back the lead and never lost it. For the first time in Marmula 1 history, a team won consecutive races. This was no longer the same old Crazy Cat Size, no. This was the new Crazy Cat Size, a team that did not let off the gas. They now had a 71 point lead. That gap was more than the total points of these 16 teams. It's insane. And it didn't stop there. After two races where the Crazy Cat Size didn't record a single point, their lead dropped to 51. They had a chance to become the first team to clinch a title before the season even ended. And at the Savage Speedway, we would witness a performance that may never be seen again. That's right. We're about to see Red Eye's magnum opus. The Crazy Cat Size only came away with zero points in their last two races. They still had a very large lead, and there was no doubt that they'd win the title. But there was a different title that we have yet to talk about. The Racers Championship. Red Eye and Yellow Eye held the top two positions, but one marble was making noise. Speedy. Only eight points off from the top, Speedy was looking to go back to back in the Racers Championship. Both Red Eye and Speedy would face off in the very next race the Savage Speedway, the home court for the Savage Speeders. This race would determine everything. And fittingly, the two would start side by side on the top with Red Eye in pole position. The race itself didn't deliver on giving us that top two fight, but it wasn't because Speedy had a bad race. No, no, no. Red Eye took the lead and never lost it. But even that statement doesn't tell the whole story. The lead just kept growing. First, it was just a two second lead. Then it was over three and a half seconds, then 4.94 seconds, and we aren't done yet. But it's worthy to note that the old record for margin of victory was 2.9 seconds. By the end of lap 11, it was already over five seconds. Now tack on a fastest lap that brought us to 6.8 seconds. The last lap was a moment for Red Eye to bask in the glory as the Crazy Cat Size had just won a championship. Will not lap Len line, but will have the moment all to Crazy Cat Size selves. Down the front stretch, Red Eye comes, and around the final turn to win. 
They weren't even in Marbula One a year ago. Curiosity brought them to the sport, and now the Cats are world champions. It was the most dominant race by far in Marbula One history. An eight second lead for the win. The coach could not be more proud, saying, quote, we always improved every single year during the Marble League. We knew what mistakes we made during those years, and this championship win proves how much we fixed them. We are more than happy to walk into our home city as champions of Marbula One. Red Eye also secured the individual title, and Yellow Eye came in third. It was a year that no one will ever forget. Never has a team dominated the rest of the field quite like the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Not the Savage Speeders, not the Arrangers, not even red number three. And now they'll go into the Marble League with a title. Is it possible they win the Marble League too? Only time will tell. But even if that doesn't work out, they'll always have this. No one can take this year away and will forever remember the dominant run of the Crazy Cat's Eyes. Thanks for watching.